Good morning, stepsons. How are you this Friday? Have you had a good week? How's school going? If you're in school, which I hope you are, formally or informally. So I thought of a thought of a story to share with you this morning. I don't even know if there's a moral to it or not, but when I uh, after I finished high school, I lived in actually I lived overseas for two years. When I came back, my mom helped me buy a car, and the car was I don't know I think it was a used car from a guy in our neighborhood. He owned a service station, a gas station, and. Uh, had a car for sale out front. I think it cost a thousand bucks or something. I think it was a Chevy, a Chevelle. I don't know what it was. Anyway, um, I had just started, just starting college, and uh, I lived at home. Was driving to college, and I had this car. So it's like I don't know, first week of college, and uh, I'm in this car that mom just bought for me because I didn't have any money. So I could get to college and and to work, and uh, I'm driving to driving to school, and I'm coming up on this intersection, and the light turns yellow. I'm thinking, well, I'm close enough. I'm going to go. I'm curious if the car behind me is going to go. So I look in my rear view to see if he's going to go. He's not slowing down either. So I'm thinking, oh, he's going to go. And I look back, and when I look back, there's a car driving through the intersection in front of me, and the light's still yellow for me. So. You know, I don't know what the dude is doing, but he's, and I couldn't stop. But, you know, I looked up in the rear view, I looked back, and there's a car going in front of me. And I hit the brakes, and and he's already passed me enough that I hit his back quarter panel. And we both end up spinning around backwards and, uh, and you know, come to a stop. So I'm sitting there in this car. It's like a week old. Well, we've had it a week. It's more than a week old. It's a used car. And, uh... And then the engine starts racing, starts revving high, and I'm thinking, what the heck? So when you when you have something like that happen, you kind of go into a little bit of shock. It's called, it's your mind just kind of goes into a, what the heck just happened? And you don't always think straight. In my case, the engine was revving. I tried to put it in park, because you always put it in park before you turn it off. It wouldn't go into park, so I just got out of the car and you know the engine's revving at high rpms it's not moving um but it's like something's wrong it's gonna blow up <laughs> wasn't gonna blow up but that's what i'm thinking so i get out of the car and uh and go to the side of the street you know and traffic the interceptions kind of stopped or i don't know what they're doing i'm not paying attention but uh Someone pulls over and stops, and he, he walks into my car that's got the high RPMs revving and just turns the key off. I didn't realize you can turn the key off whether it's in park or not, and because uh, it wouldn't go into park. I think the transmission had been jammed and busted and as it smashed into the other car. So, uh, anyway, I was okay. The guy in the other car was okay. He turned out to be some guy that had just had an argument with his wife, older guy. And she had basically kicked him out, and he, his car was full of all his possessions. And uh, when, the, when the officer, when the cop came, it was a lady cop, she came, and she's taking the report. And uh, fortunately for me, the guy that went through the intersection behind me, he was on his way to school, too. And uh, he stopped and picked up his girlfriend. He said, man, you won't believe it. I just drove around a wreck that was almost... I was almost in, and she said, well, you should go back and be a witness. So he came back, and actually he was a witness to the cop for the fact that it wasn't it wasn't red when I went through it. The sad thing for me was the guy behind the guy that ran the red light, um, he saw the wreck, and then he looked up, and by then the light had changed, so he was pretty adamant that I ran a red light, and he that's what he told the officer. Because he saw the wreck, probably looked up, and by the time he looked up, it had changed. Because I was, I was going through a yellow light, which is not illegal. 
Um, I would have been better off if I'd slowed down, <laughs> waited for the next light, obviously. But I was trying to get to school, and it wasn't a red light that I ran. So anyway, the guy behind me actually came, stopped, told the told the cop that I hadn't. Uh, I remember. Um, anyway, we were sitting in the back of the cop car at the same time. And the other guy, and he asked the police officer. Uh, but what if I just take responsibility for this? And I thought, dang, please, let him. <laughs> um, and she said, oh, I don't want you to do that, you know, unless you really think it was, because, uh, you know, then I'm going to have to give you a ticket, and and it'll be your fault, and you'd have to, your insurance would have to pay for it or whatever, which would have all been fantastic, because, frankly, it was his fault. Um, we ended up losing the car. In fact... If my if the guy that went through the intersection behind me hadn't come back, I would have been stuck um, with a ticket and a fine um, as well. So I'm really glad that he came back. But but like the officer told me, she she couldn't assign guilt one way or the other because she had offsetting witnesses. And the other guy's witness was adamant that I ran the red light. My witness was kind of a no, I don't think he ran a red light. So anyway. Uh, so if there's a moral in the story here, let me give it to you. One is don't feel like you have to run a red light or a yellow light if you're late. You might be better off to stop and wait for the next light. Another lesson, back in that day, seat belts weren't even uniform. I did have a lap belt. The shoulder strap was optional. It actually latched in. I had actually put my shoulder strap on. <clears throat> Found out later because... My shoulder was way sore. If I hadn't had that shoulder strap on, I probably would have slammed into the uh, steering wheel, even though I had my lap belt on. So, wear your seat belts. There's a reason for it. Well, wear your seat belts. And uh, I don't know if there's another one. I guess be careful when you're driving. If you do get in a wreck, realize that... Oh, here's, here's the moral of the story. I ended up getting a ride from the tow truck driver that came and got the car downtown and then I walked from where he dropped me off to where my mom worked and she worked downtown and I was up and told her and her first reaction was she was mad I mean she just spent a thousand bucks which is a lot of money back then to buy a car that now less than a week later is totaled um, and she was a little concerned about that and then she heard me talking to the insurance company on the phone I made the call to the insurance company from her office at work and uh she came in after and she said, I just want you to know I'm glad you're okay. She heard me describing what was going on. So that's, if anything, the moral of the story is you are more important than your car. If you get in a wreck, um, don't beat yourself up too badly over it, e even if it's your fault, but uh, hopefully you won't ever do that. But you're more important than your car, even if you get in a wreck. So, all right. All right, anyway, this is a long one. I apologize. This is kind of a funny, I don't know if it's funny. I just th thought of it this morning. So if you get in a wreck, make sure you wear your seatbelt in case you get in a wreck. If you get in a wreck, you're more important than your car. Always remember your stepdad loves you, and you can succeed even if you get in a wreck in your car, even though your dad's not in your daily life. All right, love you guys. I'll see you on the next video.